Aaron, we got to talk about the Olympic trials here the, yes, for the we marathon. Do. Um, we have Ricky Flynn on the phone, a graduate of Damascus High School and Lynchburg College. He placed 12th at the Olympic trials for the marathon, and he ran that among some of the best elite marathoners in the nation. Ricky, thanks for joining us on the runaround. Hey, no problem. I'm glad to be here. So, Ricky, let's take this chronologically. You were a 9.35 two-miler for Damascus High School, a very competitive time at the high school level. But did you ever expect to be competing at the level you're at today? Um, that's a tough question. I think I have the potential to get to that level. But, yeah, um, you know, dating back, I uh, running 9.35 in the two-mile in high school, I think my last workout before the trial, I, uh, I did that three times on the track um, within a few minutes. So It's funny how know, things change, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's been uh, it's been a long way coming, but, uh, you know, I think it's been a lot of hard work. And um, I guess I'm a little bit surprised, but I, I definitely thought I had the potential back in, in high school. We certainly are achieving your potential as of late, and it's been moving quickly for you. But you moved on from Damascus. Uh, you had a stellar career at Lynchburg College. You broke the school's 5,000-meter and 10,000-meter records, collected numerous All-American honors, and you were the Division Three national champ at the 2009 NCAA Cross-Country Championships. After you finished your last race at Lynchburg, did you, keep, did you plan to keep on running at that level? Did you plan to move up to the, the bigger distances for the marathon and half marathon? Um, I, I definitely plan to keep running competitively. You know, I didn't know I was going to be able to get to, quite to the marathon distance so early. Um, you know, it, it was definitely just a good opportunity um, with the Olympic trials being this year to, you know, pursue that distance and see how it worked, you know, qualifying with the half marathon and, and seeing how, you know, my first marathon went at the Olympic trials. But it was definitely something I didn't think was going to come around this quickly and uh, at least the marathon distance that is. And you still run some track races. Um, I do, but, yeah. Um, I'll be um, training for the track for the spring, actually, you know, focusing a little bit on the 5K and 10K on the track. I'll still be doing some road races here and there, though. So how do you, how's, is it hard to train for that? You know, you got to train for an event that requires more speed, like the 5K and 10K on the track, and then you're, you're running longer distances like the marathon, in which case your strength has to be way up. How do you find uh, the time to compromise that kind of training for both kinds of events? Um, well, it's tough, but, uh, you know, you got to break it down into, into steps and phases. And, uh, you know, there was definitely a long buildup of mileage and strength workouts for the marathon. And then, you know, I'm kind of taking a little bit of time to relax here, a little time off. And then, uh, I'll start, you know, building the mileage a little bit again. And then, you know, just slowly, um, going from those, that strength based workout to kind of slowly getting to that speed workout, making sure you're not going from running, you know, Five ten pace to four thirty, you know, in your first workout. So um, it's definitely something that's going to take a little time for my legs to get back used to running that fast. Um, but I'm hoping, you know, after a couple months of you know speed, a little bit more speed workouts, that my legs remember how to do it, and, and it won't be that too much of a transition. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if your legs remember how to do it. You know, it seems like you're doing it right right now. Um, as it is, what's the hardest part of making that transition? You know, you're pretty much doubling the distance from uh, 10K to the half marathon. You're going from 6.2 miles for the 10K on the track to running a half marathon on the roads. So what's the hardest part about that? Or do you feel like a natural at the longer distances? Um, that's uh, a little bit of both. I think, I think over the years I have gone, you know, as the years and years progress, I've moved up in distance, you know, from high school to college and now from college to post-collegially, um, you know, kind of taking the next step each time in distance. And it seems like I've handled it well each time and, and almost to the point where I've gotten better as I get as I get further and further in the distance. So um, I think my body does a really good job at handling the longer distance. Um, I think I'm more of like a strength-oriented runner. So, you know, the marathon suits me very well, just like the – the 10K suited me pretty well in college and, you know, just like in high school when the two miles suited me better than the mile and, and, and stuff like that. So um, my body, I think, is just good at adjusting to that, that longer distance, that grueling, you know, just kind of grind it out right. type race that I'm just kind of used to. And, uh, you know, I think that kind of fits my personality. Too, so Sounds like you're cut out for it. For those of you yeah. just tuning in, coming home from work, we're talking to Ricky Flynn here on the runaround, uh, Damascus High School grad that has stepped up to the elite level at the for the marathon race. He placed 12th at the Olympic trials. Ricky, let's talk about how you got there. Uh, you ran the Woodrow Wilson Bridge half marathon in October, clocking a time of one hour, four minutes, and 14 seconds. So at this point, you're solidly under five minutes per mile pace for four, for 13 miles did you anticipate to run that kind of race did you think this was going to be your tw your trials uh qualifying performance well going into it um the week prior to the half marathon qualifier i had run the lynch or the i'm sorry the virginia 10 miler um 
and ended up having a really good time. I ran 50, 40, and it's a, it's a heck of a hilly course. So, you know, I was, I was definitely shown to be in pretty good shape and, you know, um, having the potential to, you know, hit that qualifier in the, in the half marathon. But prior to that, in the summer, the whole goal was to kind of build up to a half marathon sometime in November, um, you know, either Richmond or Philly, um, which are both in November. I was going to, you know, pick one of those as it got closer and see if I could hit the qualifying time then. But, you know, the Virginia 10-miler came around a little bit earlier, which was uh, end of September. You know, I ran that race, ran a really good time, felt really fit and really ready. So I figured I, I found a half marathon the following weekend and figured I'd give it a shot while I felt good. So uh, my only concern was, was I was I able to recover from that 10-mile, um, you know, just seven days later for a half marathon. Absolutely. And, and um, you know, I think all the mileage I had been doing and all the long, long, hard workouts had prepared me for that, and I felt pretty good. So, you know, I, I went ahead and gave it a shot, and, and I told myself, you know, if things go well, then things go well and you hit the time. If not, you have another month to train and kind of another chance to do it in either Philly or, or Richmond. And mm-hmm. I was able to do it at the, the one in um, the Woodrow Wilson Bridge one, and it took a little pressure off. And then I had, you know, an extra month to kind of gear up for the marathon. So, Well, coming off that short rest from the 10-miler, I'm sure that you realize that all that strength work, strength work now pays off <laughs> because coming off of, you know, two hard races like that, it's hard for the body to recover, but you did it nonetheless. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And it then you move tough, on. But- you had that 64, 64 minute half marathon underneath your belt, and you go to place 12th at the Olympic trials with some of the best marathoners in the nation, and you run 212, 213. You almost double your half marathon time right there. <laughs> Did you expect that at all? <laughs> well, going into it, I expected I, um, you know, I could run anywhere from the 215 to 218 range, and I knew that, uh, you know, anything below that was going to be, you know, kind of less than uh just based on the training I had done and the workouts and the paces I was running and stuff like that. But uh you know, I went into it with an open mind and I went into it, you know, not too much pressure on myself. Obviously not one of the contenders to go to the Olympics right now. But um so that that took a little pressure off me and I, I just wanted to have a good time and you know, ended up going out a little bit harder than I wanted to and kind of just feeling comfortable at that pace and just kinda um committed to that pace and just told myself I'll see how long I can hang on to this pace and if I need to back off a little bit at some point then I can back off and I never really got to that point where I had to tell myself to back off so um you know it ended up being really well and I think I think my body was ready to you know adjust to that that marathon distance and like I said before I think I'm that type of runner that can handle that uh long and grinding out pace you know where it's not like really really intense but it's you know a long period of time where you go on right. big clips so right it really shows your fitness and you, you dipped under your goal time there so that had to be a uh, very exciting and this was your first marathon correct it was my first yeah and you had to be one of the fastest racers in the uh in the trials there in terms of marathon debutantes i mean do you know how high you finished among first time marathoners at that race at the race i'm pretty sure there was two guys ahead of me that had me for first time marathoners but um wow I saw something on online that I was, it's the 24th fastest American debut or something like that. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. That, that's really impressive, uh, Ricky. Um, I have a question for you, though. What was it like racing with elites such as um, Ryan Hall and Meb and uh, Abdi? Because, I mean, you're, you know, coming up right behind them when you're running. Like, it must have been, you know, not only intimidating, but kind of, you know, it kicked in that competitive side because you wanted to keep up with them as much as possible. What was that like? Uh, well, it's 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 really a good feeling, but I, I never really saw the top guys all that much. You know, I didn't see the Ryan Hall or or uh, Meb or or Dathan or um, Abby. I didn't see those guys really at all. But you know, because I started a little bit more conservative in the back and then kind of moved my way up the whole race. So. But throughout the race, I was passing guys, you know, and recognizing guys' names and, and, you know, recognizing them as I passed them as guys. I really, I never even put myself in the same ballpark as before, you know, before that, before the marathon. So, you know, just be able to pass those guys, run with those guys, and then keep going. You know, it was definitely, you know, something that was pretty exciting and uh, very surprising, I guess, a little bit. But it was <laughs> a really good feeling to be able to, you know, read about these guys on the internet and, and just be like, oh, man, I wish I was as good as those guys or I wish I, I, wish I could run those times. And Well, that's and the thing, the- Ricky. I think people know your name now. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. So it's, it's definitely an eye-opener and a, and a lot to think about now. And, you know, it definitely puts myself in a little bit different position than I was probably about a year ago now. You know, looking up at these guys now, I'm kind of at the same level, so... Cool. And one more question before we let you go. Sure. What's all the more impressive about this is that you're self-coached. What are the pros and cons of that? Is it difficult to train yourself and run these elite times, or do you like that? Are you kind of a lone wolf? 
Um, I think I've always kind of been a lone wolf. You know, in, in high school, I was, uh, um, you know, I had guys to work out with and stuff like that. But it seemed like, you know, when I was younger, I was already the number one runner in my freshman year. And then same thing in college. I came to college and had a couple guys to run with the first year. But after that, it was like, you know, I was kind of the number one runner for a while. So it, it seems like it's fit my mentality the past, you know, six or seven years where I kind of been, you know, training by myself and, and you know, which I think helps and hurts, but um, I've gotten used to it. And uh, I also think one of the be- the biggest benefits of that is, you know, no one knows your body as good as you do. So um, over the years I've had trouble with injuries and, you know, setbacks and things like that where, you know, maybe it was due to my coach not knowing me as well, you know, pushing me a little bit harder and me right. kind of being that, that stubborn mentality where, yeah, well, if he wants me to do this workout, I'm going to do it and I'm going to finish it. Where nowadays it's like, you know, I make the workouts and, you know, I make the decisions when I'm out there. If if I'm starting to feel a little bit injured or, or you know, weak or tired, you know, I can I can set it back. Or, or if I need to do a little bit more tomorrow and a little bit less today or vice versa, then I can do that. You know, I know exactly what my body needs and, and how to prevent those injuries and, you know, um, what to do when I need to do it and, and when to gear up and when not to gear up. So there you I go. think that helps. But um, it's tough some days when, you know, you don't really know what to do or, or if you're doing enough. Um, so that's a little bit, you know, tough mentally but and I went into the marathon I'm looking at all these videos online of all these guys doing these really crazy workouts and I'm telling myself <laughs> I haven't done anything that long or that fast <laughs> right so who knows who knows if that's good or bad but it ended up working out for me so Absolutely. very cool well Ricky we, it's a pleasure to have you on the run around here uh, congratulations and we wish you the best of luck in 2012 uh, we're looking forward to seeing your name and some big time results absolutely uh, I appreciate it thanks for having me I, I enjoyed it very cool alright and coming up we'll be talking to local elite marathoner and ultra marathoner Michael Wardian stay